remember their names. I think it's because she doesn't like them. She doesn't want to be working with them. So she calls them Bug and Doofus instead of Mantis and Drax. And, and this is where I feel like, I mean, that sounds like something that someone, you know, like if you imagine like a, a parody of someone, to, to be clear, I think it's a funny joke. I'm not saying, you know, but if you were to think of like a, a parody of someone who hates the MCU, like, oh, you know, the Guardians with, with Bug and, and Doofus, you know, it's just, yeah. And apparently Mantis always makes people fall in love with with Drax when whenever there's a guard that they have to get past. Which is funny. I don't love that they made it like a thing of you know, as far as I could tell, the guard was male, so it comes across as a little homophobic. And I guess also, you know, oh the guard is not conventionally attractive. Oh, can you imagine if someone who wasn't conventionally attractive was into you? Ah, oh, yeesh. And it just, I feel like they could so easily, like, you could just have it be, like, a conventionally attractive woman, you know, and, and Drax still be really annoyed with it, you know, but as it is, it comes across as, uh, yeah. And... They come across Daniela Melchior, who has the, the, you know, she, she has access to the thing, so they have to get, you know, some, some results there, and, you know, <laughs> Peter, I really love when these movies, I really admire Chris Pratt for going along, I really love when these movies completely make a joke out of him thinking, you know, he, he thinks that he can just smooth his way into any, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna walk up to a woman, he's gonna say something charming, and she is gonna completely fall for it, and then here it's like, I don't know, I thought he was kind of a douchebag, <laughs> you know, just, but the, yeah, you know, he walks up and he's like, so, uh, my name's Patrick Swayze, and he starts quoting, I, honestly, I haven't, I'm I'm not sure. I've I've watched a couple of sway. You know, I have watched Ghost. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I have you know. He was very very talented. R.I.P. Um, you know, I. It's not really my generation. You know, let's let's that's a that's definitely part of it. You know, I have absolutely no problem with with Patrick Swayze, and I 100 percent are you know it. He's, he's one of those where, like, men want to be like him, women want to be with him, and I 100% understand why. He really was very, very cool, you know. But, yeah, I'm almost certain that what he says, what, what Star-Lord says he, in, in this scene is a quote from one of Patrick Swayze's movies. The thing of, like, I love, what was it? I love the way you look in the mirror when you think nobody's watching, so, something like, I, I forget, but yeah. And, you know, meanwhile, Gamora is like, this is not, I, I don't have time or patience for the, for this, so she just grabs, just, yeah, and, and pulls a gun, yeah. And the guards catch up to the various guardians, and you have the fight or flight or fight or run thing and I really loved Mantis's attack like you want to dance rage attack <laughs> and and just the you know we see the rage attack one just shooting wildly and the guy dancing just you know just completely ignoring that there's gunfire really close that's yeah and yeah, Quill points out past Gamora is mean. And Drax is shot and Nebula is shot. Like it really this was a movie where there were a number of scenes where I wasn't sure if everyone was gonna make it. Like honestly, was there maybe You know what? There was actually at least one scene 
for for each of the guardians there was at least one scene where I was like is this are they gonna die at this you know let's see I'm not that big of an idiot I just needed to get into the system so I've been thinking yeah oh no not about anything specific I just thought it was you know I wanted you to know I've been thinking cool I've been thinking too about something specific very very charming and they all you know all of them name you know Ly Lila Teefs because while everyone has them mine are very very prominent and Floor because she's lying on the floor so she wants to be called Floor and the others laugh and you know and and Rocket names himself Rocket because he wants he wants to take the other three on a rocket far, far away. You know, just heartbreaking. Let's see. Yeah, and you know, Nebula says what was done to Rocket was worse than what Thanos did to her. And And Adam Warlock, you know, make it make it clear that we're serious. I meant make him scared. I didn't mean dis, you know, what was it? Disintegrate his, you know. That was, was pretty serious, though. Can't we just ask his friend? That's an animal. That's not a friend. How do you not understand? You know, just the. Oh, it looks so sad. That's making me feel bad inside. <laughs> and Gamora sends the information, and they catch, you know, so yeah, they're able to catch up to them. So Mantis tells Drax what to say to Peter, and he struggles with analogies still, and like it was like it was very funny watching him to cuz you know like the the you know yeah uh peter you know he says the whole thing and peter's like i thought i thought you weren't any good with metaphor of course i understand metaphor the reason that i'm saying that gamora is like you know, one of the things in the, in the water, I forget the word, is because she is green and so is it. Now, as far as analogy, her face is made of leaves. <laughs> and then he says, like, the other day I took a poop and it looked like a fish. Even my butt is capable of analogies. And yeah, we get the you know the high evolutionary. I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna call him Herb. It's it's exhausting to say the entire thing. Apparently, in the comics, his name is Herb. Herb feels threatened, but you know he he says, "I made you to rocket." How did you know? You know, how did you know something I didn't? I'm the one who made you. I'm supposed to be in control here. And he's ridiculously cruel and you know, oh yeah, incinerate the rest of 89. And yeah, Rocket is dying. They really need that pass key. They go to counter Earth. And Kaiju, f uh, Groot going full Kaiju was pretty funny, and you can also see why it works. I appreciate the detail of the, the tongue, like, you know, once he gets all big, he does like, oh. And Nebula and Mantis bicker. 
Now what do I do? Open the effing door. That was legitimately a a funny f bomb. You know, I'm I'm not really I'm I don't mind harsh language. Uh, you know, but these are movies that are you know supposed to be able to take your kids to you know. But yeah, that was a very funny f bomb. I really, I gotta say. I think they should have Deadpool be upset about it. He he should definitely be like, okay, so finally I get a third movie. And they blew the F bomb. You know, they some somebody else already got to draw an F bomb. You know, I'm I'm pretty sure that movie is gonna be R rated because like they did a PG thirteen re edit of the second movie that didn't quite do as well as they had hoped once upon a time once upon a Deadpool I haven't watched it so yeah but I definitely think it would be a wasted opportunity if Deadpool doesn't comment on that really badass you know genetically altered guards and Rocket goes to to free his his buddies and Lila dies because Herb shoots her, and Rocket cries, and honestly, the, the floor repeatedly crying out, Rocket Teeth Floor Go Now. That really got to me. Like, holy crap. Just, you know, the 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 fear in her voice. She's so scared. She knows this is this is it. If they don't get out now, they will die. And yeah. And Rocket attacks Herb's face. And it's just like, yes, you know, just do not stop, please. Not on my account. Keep going. You know. And Herb gives a speech that Peter really wants. You know, he doesn't want to hear it. And War Pig attacks Gamora. And the planet, you know, Counter Earth starts to be destroyed. And Adam Warlock rips off Warpig's head. Guess that'll show him for being so pig-headed. And they keep, you know, I like the running gag of trap or face-off. And Gamora stops the ship right in front of the others. Very, very, came very close to running them over and they start entering space it gets very very dangerous and we see all the caged people that was also like holy crap this guy is awful just such a monster and yeah more arguing between Nebula and Mantis and Drax and I really like that like Mantis straight up stands up for Drax you know Nebula pushes him and Mantis says you don't get to push him yes yes you want you need to find fault in everyone find fault in me fine but you don't get to push him you know and he, she points out he's the only one of us who doesn't hate himself he's dumb but he's fun and he he loves us you know and the the ah uh, what's it called <laughs> you know this thing of i know to you you know it's all you you have to be useful or smart and drax is like i don't think i like this defense <laughs> And we 
Rocket starts going into light. Peter won't let Rocket go. And we do get the thing of, like, you you know, you'll be together with us, but not yet. You know, the going to light. You know, and even Lila can't call him a raccoon. He's still like, I'm not a raccoon. And... Yeah, and, and Peter, Rocket and Groot hug, and does make Gamora smile, and, and the, uh, what's it called, um, there's the thing of, yeah, you know, um, Peter thinks that Nebula is, is dead. And you know, so Rocket is like, so uh, where's where's Nebula? Oh uh, well, um, she, uh, cause she's you know the signal's right behind you. <laughs> and Peter has some choice words for Herbert. I don't remember all of it, but he said some, he compared him to Skeletor, which is true. There's definitely a Skeletor thing there. And Herb doesn't like butts, and he cannot lie. Let's see. Yeah, and we go to the. Um, let's see, is this one? Yeah, I think this is when it it cuts to you know Craglin, and the the others are are playing uh, a card game. And Cosmo is using telekinesis to hold the cards, you know, in the air in, in front of her. And she talks about, you know, so the Soviets, they send me to space. They did not expect me to come back. But even Soviets do not call me bad dog. <laughs> and you've got the... the uh, what was I, f I forget his name, but the guy with the best eyebrows in the business from the first one is like, For the love of all that is holy, Craglin, will you just tell her that she is a good dog because this is getting exhausting? And he's like, No. Bad dog. And she's like, It hurts every time. <laughs> I really love because it is like, you know. If, you know, if you've had a, yeah, if you've been near a dog that's been told, bad dog, you know they get, like, really, really sensitive about that. So imagine one that can speak English and just, yeah. And Nebula, Mantis, and Drax are trying to explain to the kids and, you know, Nebula says it in English, and then Mantis tries to, like, ASL it, and the, you know, Nebula gets angry at her because it's like, you know, I, I didn't tell you to, to translate, you know, and they get into a shouting match, and it scares the kids, and Drax, you know, he says, you know what my children loved when I made monkey noises and then he starts going beep boop and like doing the robot and I think it's Nebula goes how is that like 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 monkey noises and man's is like I, I don't know but it's working you know just and and then apparently Drax was able to speak the same language as these kids all along and Nebula's like why didn't you just tell me that you spoke their language? And he's like, why didn't you just ask me? And... Let's see... Yeah, and, and they fly nowhere to the... to where the... the to where Herb is to attack, and there's a lot of barrels on that cannon. And, like, nobody says the words, but, like, visually and, like, narratively, 
you know, Herb thinks he's a god, here's another god. You know, he, he keeps thinking he's superior. Nobody can possibly defeat me. I'm god. So is nowhere. And the hell spawn attack, which, yeah, very, very tense. And let's see. The, um, yeah, the, the Nebula, Mantis, and Drax are attacked by Abelisks. Or at least, yeah, they're, they're surrounded by Abelisks. Adam Warlock really loves that loath cat. And Mantis talks, you know, communicates with the Abelisks. And it 100% works. And, you know, she points out they eat batteries, not people. You know. But the other, yeah, you know, they, they look... They look scary. They sound scary. But she points out, well, yeah, they're they're scared of us. You know, they they eat batteries. They're not gonna eat us. But they see us, and they don't know if we're gonna attack. So they assume we might attack. So they make themselves as scary as possible. You know, and this is a thing. You know, if yeah, in nature, a lot of animals will try to to scare off. You know, if it if it encounters something that it doesn't know, you know, and yeah, you know, some a, a number of people will, you know, if they encounter someone that they don't know, they'll assume, oh, this is dangerous, and so they'll they'll do something hoping to to scare off the person, and you know, if you are able to communicate with them. Maybe you can, you know, maybe it can go better. And Yondu shows up in a vision because, let's be honest, I think at this point, Michael Rooker has to, or Rooster, as at least one of the abridged scripts very amusingly puts it, he has to appear at least briefly if, you know, if James Gunn is writing and directing a comic book movie, you know, doesn't have to be a major role, but he has to at least appear, at least briefly, it's, it's the rules, you know. I mean, in the, in the holiday special, he voiced his own, you know, he, yeah, he voiced the character he normally plays in the flesh, you know, the... Yeah, and, you know, he, he tells... I feel like Peter could have conveyed this to Craglin. Like, I use my heart. That's exactly what he said. Or, I mean, it's, you know, I use my whole... You know, but it's what Peter guessed that he was trying to say. And just, yeah. But, yeah, it was, it was super cool when, you know, he's able to, to take out a bunch of health spawn using that. And... The yeah, Craglin's great with they're just in time to to save and Cosmo uses telekinesis to you know save when when the arrow let's see I think the arrow got like stuck in a wall which like I appreciate because for years people have been like it's way too OP there's nothing how could you possibly stop the arrow well if it gets stuck in a in a bit of concrete that's that'll do it and you know. Yeah, he says, good dog. And she's like, I knew you thought I was a good dog. And, like, jumps up at Sean Gunn. Did Maria have to do that part as well? Like, jumping up at Sean Gunn? I'm... I don't know. As long as she was cool with it, that's, that's fine. And Sean Gunn... Given that he does the, the the you know he's the he's the on set rocket, so he's also had to do some really weird things. Yeah. Let's see. And yeah, Herb faces a mutiny because he treats so many people so badly and the movie really does a good job 
showing, you know, hurt people hurt people. Pain begets pain. You know, why did Craglin keep calling you know, he kept he kept calling Cosmo a bad dog. He he doesn't actually think she is, but he was upset because it was going to be his big moment with the arrow, and then he failed, and then she outdid him with the telekinesis. So, you know, yeah, he's he's going to take that out on her because he blames her, even though, like, it wasn't her fault that the arrow thing failed, you know, and of course, when challenged in public, she's going to show that she's good at that kind of, you know, but yeah. And... Yeah, we get some Beastie Boys music. Very cool. Love the long take. Super cool. And Adam actually survived, but he does fall over. And we get the thing, you know, everyone deserves a second chance. Rocket goes for the cages. Freeze the raccoons. Sees with his own eyes. Yes, my species is raccoon. And Herb attacks Rocket. And we see again, he has the God Complex. And, you know, he says, my name is Rocket Raccoon. This is the first time he said the full... Because in the comics, it's always Rocket Raccoon. He doesn't just go by Rocket. But, yeah, you know, this was what... This was why the 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 character didn't say my name is rocket raccoon before now you know gun wanted it to be the yeah he usually get you know usually rocket gets very angry when people call him a raccoon Let's see and everyone teams up to kill herb and gamora took his face oh. and like when they did that you know at first you just see the the face come off and I was like oh they're gonna leave it to the imagination nope you know it's it's kind of it's like when when you're watching a Jason Voorhees movie like are we gonna are we gonna see the face or are they just gonna imply that there's something gnarly in there and we'll only see a little bit through the mask, and yeah, they full on showed, yeah. And nowhere becomes nowhere's arc. Pete goes into space. I really thought he was done for. Like they even do the thing with the with the face. Even Schwarzenegger couldn't come back from that one. And. Adam saves him. Let's see. And, you know, there's a big group hug, and even Adam joins in, which was, that, that was legitimately sweet. And, you know, Gamora doesn't join in the, the hug, but she, yeah. And Peter is now ready to accept past Gamora as she is. Let's see. And yeah, Peter and Mantis leave to find themselves. I don't know why they don't just check the mirror, but whatever. And Drax the dad instead of the destroyer is... That, that is legitimately a, a great, you know, because it is, you know, Thanos is gone. The, his family is avenged. You know, he, he, did, he didn't personally kill Thanos, but he was a, an integral part of killing both Ronan and Thanos. So, the... the Ah, crap. I forget who, but he helps kill at least some... Yeah, because a character is about to... 
one of the one of the bad end game one of the bad guy characters is about to kill one of the good guy characters and Drax like stabs the bad guy character and then is it maybe Ant-Man who steps on the bad guy character afterwards I I forget but yeah you know there's a it's, and the and the character that he yeah wasn't it was it Spider-Man that he saves and Spider-Man is a huge part of why they win at the end of Endgame. So, yeah, you know, he there's no need for him to go around hurting people anymore. And yeah, like the idea that he's he embraced the the you know he was apparently a good father, and and it's it's a super healthy you know for sure we do need people to go out and and fight literal physical battles we do but not everybody that feels an urge to fight it's not necessarily always healthy for them and it's not it's not healthy to stay there you know he has reached a point where it is better for him to try to focus on being a, a father to you know he, yeah if he can be a father to all these kids nowhere that's that's much much better for for him and for them and there are other you know let's be honest Adam Warlock can definitely pick up where you know where Drax leaves off that's that's not going to be a problem and and Adam like for sure like he has good in him as well but like now that he's tried fighting for a good cause it really seems like that's that's where his heart's at right now so yeah rocket is made new captain and group just straight up says i love you guys which feels like cheating but i don't know i mean I guess they just, you know, Gunn felt like it was necessary to, to make it, there, there, there should be no ambiguity as to, to what he said there. And it ends with a dance party, and Nebula smiles and laughs because of the, the kids, which is really great, and that's a great, like, Cause, cause, yeah, you know, it's not that she's incapable of this sort of thing, but just usually she doesn't feel no, nothing makes her smile or laugh, you know. And here is a situation, you know, and and again, like not all kids hashtag not all kids, and not everybody, you know, is gonna have that reaction. But like, yeah, you know, kids can make you smile and and laugh, even if you are not normally you know the the kind of yeah it's uh, yeah let's see and yeah the the um, we see peter go visit his grandpa jason who you know like it's it's really cool that they did get but yeah uh, i got to say to to me he'll always be Greg Henry, for me, will always be Val Resnick from Payback. But yeah, really, really cool that they got him back. Let's see, and, you know, yeah, he, he recognizes Peter and immediately starts yelling at him for all the... to, to make up for lost time. And... Drax dances at at the party after all the the times because because that's also a thing like come on it's fun you know I don't like dancing and people tend to be very happy when they find out that I don't like dancing because that is not something they want to be you know witness but yeah if them if you know in the right circumstance you know there's nothing wrong with with dancing and that let's see i have yes so that brings us to the final section 
notes taken before watching. Let's see. So yeah, the, the first two movies have the will they won't they romance between Peter and Gamora. And yeah, you know, this movie does basically resolve like they're not they're not gonna end up together. They're they're on different paths. And that's fine. You know, one of the trailers you know, that Gamora says the girl Quill describes sounds more like Nebula, then Quill looks at Nebula, admires her eyes. I really hope they won't yeah, I'm really glad that they didn't have that will they won't they resolve by Peter pairing up with Nebula. It would really feel like he was just settling. And Nebula deserves better than that. And I'm glad that the you know, past Gamora didn't end up with Peter. That would feel like there was a worry about ending something like that without reassuring white guys that if they're straight and in love with a girl, they will end up with her. And, yeah, you know, the thing I had guessed was, uh, you know, if they could just have him realize he doesn't need a partner, he has enough in family, yeah, that is basically what they ended up doing. So, let's see, yeah, quite appreciate that. There's nothing, I'm not saying there's not, I, I'm not opposed to, you know, monogamous coupling whether romantic or otherwise but I it's, yeah it would really feel wrong in my opinion to yeah I think I've made my point so the yeah this is the end of the video hit me up in the comments let me know what is your favorite Guardians of the Galaxy Ah, uh, let's see, entry, let's go with, uh, you know, you can include the, the holiday special. What was your favorite part of this movie? What do you hope to see from future Guardians? You know, James Gunn isn't going to be part of it. Dave Bautista isn't going to be part of it. But, you know, Disney still have the the rights to these characters, and they're very, very popular, so... Yeah, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell like it's a gloopy, gloppy, biological keypad. There should be a link to my main channel page, one or more links to stuff like relevant playlists. They suggest that video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and one talking about the episode that most recently came to Disney Plus of the True Lies streaming show. And recently the Review and Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.